I'll forever praise Jehovah. I will lift him higher every day. He is the Lord, He is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. I'll forever praise, praise my Jehovah. I will lift Him higher every day. He is the Lord, He is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. I'll forever praise my Jehovah. I will lift him higher, higher every day. He is the Lord, He is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. I'll forever praise, praise my Jehovah. I will lift him higher, higher every day. He is the Lord, He is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. I'll forever praise Jehovah, lift him higher every day. He is the Lord, he is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise him. I'll forever praise my Jehovah. I will lift God higher, higher every day. He is the Lord, he is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. I'll forever praise Jehovah. I will lift Him higher, higher every day. He is the Lord. He is the Lord of hosts. I'll forever praise Him. This is everybody. Welcome once again. It's your favorite program, A Chapter A Day, a.k.a. A Card for short. On here, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, we should or should not do, so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view, that's the whole idea. We also get to create an audio Bible, King James Version, and we get to study the Word together. So that the word of God can become a practical reality to us so much so that we can leave the word. The word can just become a part and parcel of us. Just like we breathe air without thinking. That's how we want to get to a place where we can leave the word of God without thinking. It's just so much a part of us like that. So welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> We'll start by handing over this session to God, after which we're doing the birthday party. After the birthday party, we have to pray for the birthday people. Every single person was born today. And then we do the Bible party. And then we pray for whatever God tells us to pray for. And we appreciate God for an awesome session because we always have amazing sessions. Just like God says in his word, it's going to be from glory to glory. That's exactly our experience every single time here on the chapter a day and we're forever grateful. So our Bible party is taken from the book of Psalm 59 and it has 17 verses. Psalm 59 verse 1 to 17. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made me rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for your goodness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for all the amazing things you've done for us, you're doing and you're still to do. Lord, we're forever grateful. We don't take it for granted. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you're going to speak to us today in a very special way, O oh God. Speak to us like a father will speak to his children. Lord, let our expectations not be cut short. Father, answer us, O oh God. Come through for us, for in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you and we appreciate you, O oh God, for being a God who can never fail but can change things, who can never change but can change things. Lord, as you keep changing things in us, oh God, give us the grace to stand and keep standing till the end. Father, I thank you. We bless your holy name, oh God. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor because you deserve it. Increase while we decrease. So it's going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced throughout this edition of the chapter a day in the mighty name of Jesus. No ayota of me, but you and you. Let the focus and the the whole thing be towards your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent down the cross for our sakes. 
Thank you, Lord God. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Ginomus. Amen, amen, and amen. So let's get the birthday party started. The first person is Mr. Ili, o, Mr. Iyi Oluyemi. Mr. E. Oluyemi is actually the son to my pastor. When I was in Dubai, um, we're actually fellowshipping at Redeemed Christian Church of God. And, and of course, our pastor was Pastor Yemi. Elise, um, actually an amazing person. He's also very welcoming and very friendly. I got to um, get to know him when we're doing doing the, um, the youth gathering. We used to have some youth meetings and youth outings and stuff like that. That's how I got to know him. He's very creative and a very fun to be with person. Happy birthday to you, sir. E. The next person is Mam Ajokewaka. Mam Ajokewaka, one we used to be in secondary school. We used to be in secondary school together. Very pretty, very jovial, very friendly person. And then I will never forget, none of us always ever forget, we used to call her milk teeth. Her teeth are so white. Like we think like, you, you basically think like she has, never lost, she has never lost her teeth since she was a baby. You know that baby teeth are really, really soft and white and just milkish. That's how her teeth were, like when we were already in secondary school. So we used to call her milk teeth or something like that. And she's so pretty. And she's so, so hardworking. And then she smiles too. Her smile is just pretty. Sekaris have that thing. It's a gift. I always tell you guys, right? The next person is Mam Etasuliza. Mam Etasuliza, she was, um, I think, a class ahead of us or something. And she's also one very welcoming person. She also has this um, very caring attitude and very broad smile she always has on always looking out for people who are around her, people she cares about. The last but not the least is Mam Gomlarisa. Mam Gomlarisa were in the same class together with Mam um, Wakajoke. She used to be very calm, like kind of reserved. Not reserved like she doesn't talk. She talks, but not like me. <laughs> I used to be the one who talks like much. It wasn't strange. But Mam Gomlarisa, she's very quiet. She's very soft-spoken. And she's also very welcoming. Now, of course, the smile thing is a secret thingy, so you can't take it away from us. I mean, God gave that to us. Like, he just pip, released it on, upon all secrets to be able to smile like there's no tomorrow. They can smile for the world. Okay, so let's take that again. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Ili. Mr. E. Oluyemi. Happy birthday to you, Ma'am Waka Joke. Happy birthday to you, Ma'am Etasuliza. Happy birthday to you, ma'am, Gom Larissa. Happy birthday to all these amazing people. And we are getting to pray for them. So, like I said, I'll be reading some of these things and reading them with some quotes that I wrote or some things that I put on my book. Because this season of a particular year, I was actually either watching or reading a book by late Dr. Miles Monroe or by Lisa Nichols. I was watching their videos or I was reading a book by one of them. I think basically it was videos that I was watching. So I was watching videos. So as I was watching these videos, I was actually putting out some quotes that really, really got to me. So, or some things that really got to me, I was putting them out there and Somehow, I was writing it on my birthday book. So, I'll be reading some of these quotes to you always. So, this one says, there are three sets of people. There are followers, there are dreamers, there are visionaries. Followers do not get beyond idea stage. They have the idea and that's just it. They, they understand the idea of what is going on, of what needs to be done. That's all. That's where they end. Then there are dreamers. Um, these ones are people that imagine it. They imagine. They talk and talk, but no action. So they talk about it. The first people are followers. They just have an idea. They just know that this thing exists. The second group of people are dreamers. They know. They talk about it. 
they imagine it they talk about it they've gone past just the idea stage they've even contemplated and they're imagining how that idea can look like you know and then they start talking about it but action not at all then visionary these are the people that they take their imaginations they put it on paper and then they make you a visionary no so let's take that again visionaries they take these imaginations put on paper and then they make you turn into a missionary so it, you now put action to it that's basically what they're saying visionary people are people that when they have seen it they imagine it they've spoken about it they now put it on paper and they start acting on it those are the people so you should know who you are right now at the stage of your life that you are are you a follower a dreamer a visionary which of them are you are you the person who you just had the idea but that's just it I have this idea are you the person who has had the idea you've imagined it you're talking about it and talking about it and talking about it but you're not acting on it or are you the person who has written it down imagined it you've taken it beyond just your imagination you've written it down and you're acting on it you're taking steps to make sure that it comes to pass which are you be a visionary be a visionary may the good lord help us in jesus name okay so now let's pray and then we start the bible party our bible party is taken from the book of psalm 59 and he has 17 verses but first we would have to pray for every single person who is born today and then we'll get on with their bible party are you ready are you ready to pray for the people who were born today praying for them today you could be the one pray getting prayed for tomorrow so you cannot afford to give up you can't afford to give up okay so let's go father we thank you for this day that you've made we rejoice and be glad in it we thank you for adding a new year to the lives of these amazing people we pray that you open the windows of heaven and pour out the choices of your blessings upon their lives, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, peacemakers, and world changers. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you open doors for them that no man can shut, and shut every door for them that no man can open. And Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best or stand out, O oh God. That you divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. And divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best or progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destined to help us too. And strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right. Let their gifts to make a way for them. Causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. Lord, I pray that you also strategically position their destiny help us all around them. So that when they need help... Help is going to be made available to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them, O oh God, to not only get to the top, but get to the top and stay there permanently. You give them all the strategies and techniques that, that are necessary for them to get to that point. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to cause them to stand out and not fit in. And even as they stand out under fulfilling purpose and getting on and on and on, if they get to a place where they feel overwhelmed, they feel tired, they feel like they want to give up or back out, They'll hear a clean, loud, clear voice that's going to say, this is the way, walk that we need. And they will stay on course. They will not stray the path. They will not derail. And after it all, all glory will be given unto your holy name, O oh God. Father, I pray that you're going to bless them, keep them safe and secure from all the wiles of the enemy. Lord, I pray that their part is going to keep shining brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. And I pray, O oh God, that your word is going to be a lamp unto their feet and a light to their part. Lord, that they will not stray, they will not derail. That people will see your good works in their lives and glorify your Father who is in heaven. They will be the one manifesting, O oh God, as the people are waiting for the manifestation of the Son of God. The groaning nation is waiting. They will be the ones to manifest and people will just praise God and serve God when they see all that you will do through the lives of these ones. Father, I pray, O oh God, that you are going to help them, O oh God, to do your will, to do your bidding. Lord, I pray this day, O oh God, that you perfect all that concerns them. 
Give them Psalms 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, and dancing, so that if you get, if you tarry to come, they'll be here same time next year, giving testimony of all the amazing things that you've done in their lives, for them, with them, around them, or through them, to the glory of your name. Lord, take to that control. Anyone who comes in contact with them, O oh Lord, let them actually enjoy and literally enjoy the blessings that accompany all that happens, O oh God. Father, I pray, O oh God, that as the blessing encompass them as the shoe round about, no weapon formed to fashion against them shall prosper, and any tongue that rises against them in judgment, you shall condemn in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you, Abba Father, because we know you always hear an answer. Take all the glory, both now and forevermore. Father, I pray that money, money will make money in their pockets, blessings will make blessings in their lives, favor will make favor in their lives, even as you clothe them with a garment of praise, honor and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we're forever grateful. We say thank you. We can't thank you enough because you're a good God. We can't thank you enough because you're a faithful Father. We can't thank you enough because you're an awesome God. You're the unchanging God. That's who you are. You're ever faithful and ever true. Lord, take preeminence, both now and forevermore. Let your light so shine before us, O oh God, so that men will see your good works in us and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Lord, I pray, O oh God, let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings me, blessings in their lives. Favor me, favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with the garment of praise, honor and favor. In Jesus' name we pray. We seal every prayer and request with the blood of Jesus. And we say thank you already for answering us. For in Jesus' name we pray. And all the saints shall say, Ginormous, Amen, Amen. Amen and amen. But I say amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. I say I pray. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. I say I pray. Amen. Let it be in the life to the prayers. Amen, 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 amen. With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. In their lives as we pray. Amen. In their lives as we pray. Amen. In their lives as we pray. God bless you all tremendously. May you fill your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast. And do for you that which no man can do but him and him alone. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Happy birthday. Have a blast. Mwah. Happy birthday, guys. So let's get on. Are you ready? It's time for the... Bible party, Psalm 59, 17 verses. Are you ready? So let's go. Let's get this Bible party started. Get this Bible party started. Ready or not, here we come. Let's do this. Let's do this. Everybody, come on. Guys, let's do. Oh my, oh my. You are God and you're in control. You're my great, great Jehovah. You are God. Okay, that is set. Not endorsed are you ready? Psalm 59 to the chief musician, I'll touch it. Mitcham of David, when Saul sent and they watched the house to kill him. Deliver me from mine enemies, O oh my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloody men. 
For lo, they lie in wait for my soul, and mighty are gathered against me. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's take that back. Psalm 59. To the chief musician, Altachit, Mitchtam of David, when Saul sent, and they watched the house to kill him. Deliver me from my enemies, O God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity, and save me from bloody men. For lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me. Not for my transgression, nor for my sin. O Lord, they run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, and behold, thou therefore, O Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the hidden. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. Selah. They return at evening. They make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Behold. They belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who say they not hear? But thou, O Lord, shalt laugh at them. Thou shalt have all the hidden in derision. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee. For God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by their power, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. For the sin of their mouth, and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and, and for cursing, and lying which they speak. Consume them in wrath, consume them, that they may not be, and let them know that God ruleth in Jacob, until the end of the earth, Selah. And at evening, let them return, and let them make a noise like a dog, and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat, and grudge, if they be not satisfied. The bike's guy. It's gone. Let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I will sing aloud of all thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense and the God of my mercy. This is the word of the Lord. And all the saints shall say a very ginormous thanks be to god so guys let's get ready what did you learn what did you learn what did you learn can we go yep so let's do this let's do this together let's do this together okay so this is David, right? David has always come clear to before God. He has always complained. Like he tells God exactly what he's desiring, what he wants. And that's what we've been learning. And we've been saying all the time that don't go to God pretending. Don't go to God acting like all is well when it's not. Because the truth is that he knows your heart. He doesn't want you to come to him pretending. He wants you to come to him honestly, in all honesty, and tell him that, Lord, this is what is going to on. This is what is happening in my life. Father, please fix this. That's what God wants us to do. That's how he wants us to come to him. He wants us to come to him in all honesty and tell him what is going on in our lives and how we feel. But sometimes it feels like we have to hide it. We have to pretend. We have to act like everything is going on well meanwhile it's not. No, that's not what God wants us to do. That's not how God wants it to happen. He wants us to come to him in all honesty. So how are you feeling right now? Are you feeling like your enemies are having a hold on you? Like they're just pressing you to the edge? David says, deliver me from my enemies, O God. Defend me. 
See what was happening in his time. Like his enemies were all around waiting for him. They're just waiting for him. Let him just make the least mistake and they'll kill him. They were waiting for him. They were watching his house to kill him. And it's only God that can save you in those kinds of scenarios. When you have people watching and waiting, they're just watching and waiting to kill you. They're just watching and waiting to deal with you. Only God can save you in such situations. Honestly. Honestly. Only God can save you in such situations. But some of us who have refused to accept the free gift of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, that he died and made it possible for us to be set free. Some of us have received, refused to receive. That's why we'll keep suffering. That's why we'll keep going through all the difficulties. We'll keep going through all the challenges. We'll keep going through all the hard times. We'll keep going through all the things we're going through. Because we're stubbornly not accepting the free gift that God gave us through his son Jesus Christ. By sending him to come and die on the cross for our sakes. And after that he rose again and defeated death. Death could not hold him captive. It says deliver me from the workers of iniquity. And save me from bloody men. David always gives a, a vivid and perfect description of who these people are. Bloody men. Of course they are always waiting for blood right. Sometimes they always want to just deal with you. And suck out the living daylight out of you. Life. Life is in the blood, right? It's like they just want to just sap out your blood from your system. But God no go agree. <laughs> for lo, they lie in wait for my soul. The mighty are gathered against me, not for my transgression, nor for my sin, O Lord. They run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me and behold. So he knows the reason why they are following him up. He says they're not even following him up for his sin, no. No. They just want to destroy him just like that. Jesus did not do anything wrong. These Pharisees and Sadducees were following him just to trap him and then deal with him. He didn't do anything wrong. All he was going about doing was his purpose. It was his mission. It was the reason why he was called. He was called to seek and save the lost. He was called to preach the good news. He was called to deliver the oppressed. That's what he was called to do. And so because he went about doing that thing that he was called to do, the Pharisees and Sadducees did not like him. Why? Because the Pharisees and Sadducees, they were twatting and just doing the gospel anyhow, anyhow. So when these people, the people that are in the world, people that need what we carry, they know what they need. So when they see the genuine, they will follow the genuine. You don't need to persuade them. You don't need to convince them. You don't need to try to, you know, play some gimmicks. To get them to come follow you. No. Jesus didn't play no gimmicks. He just came and started fulfilling purpose. Doing what he was born to do. And the people who needed the solution that he carried. Just started following him. And they left the Pharisees and Sadducees. Who were playing around them all the time. Who were playing jokes with them. It's the same thing. When you stay on what God has called you to do. You're passionate about it. You keep at it. People are going to start following you. Whether you want it or not. Why? Because they need the solution that you are presenting. And they know when they see the original solution, when they see the genuine solution to their problems, they know. So they'll just start following. You will not need to have to start convincing them. You will not need to have to play gimmicks. You will not need to have to lie. You will not need to have to tweak things or turn things here and there to cause people to follow you. No. You will not have to, like some people used to advise me, add news, so news, 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 put news. When you are putting news, people love to watch your channel. No, it was not news I was called to do. Because the truth is that if I start doing that kind of thing, I'll get somewhere and get stuck. And it's not going to be funny. Me, I was called to encourage people. You know, oh, add cooking, oh, add cooking, add cooking, oh. No, I'll reach somewhere and get stuck. Because that's not what I was called to do. I was called to encourage people. That is the only place where I can give the right kind of solution to. I can really be a solution in the area of encouraging people. On helping people not to lose hope. On helping people not to give up. Yes. That's where I can function properly. Because that's what God called me to do. So you need to know who you are. You need to know what God called you to do. So that when people are trying to push you here and there, front, line, front right, left, back and center, 
You will know what to tell them. You will know what to say to them. No, this is not me. This is not where God wants me to be. God wants me to be here or there, not here. Because that's what happens. Some of us were just carried away by every wind of doctrine because we want to be everywhere. We look at this one. We look at this person. They are progressing in this thing they are doing. It's what God has called them to do. So that's why they are progressing. They are doing it so effortlessly. You begin to wonder. I can also do it. And if I do it, well, you know. I remember when I used to do peanut burger. My mom used to do donuts. And then I used to do peanut burger. She was the one doing the peanut burger and the donuts at first, originally. And then I'll go sell. I'll get some profits from it. She'll give me my own profit and all. At some point, I started being the one making the peanut burger. And she was making only the donut. Okay. So, I remember doing that for a long time. People loved it. People enjoyed it. They started buying from me and me and me and me alone. A lot of people were doing it. But a lot of people just wanted mine. I remember when I was about to travel. I told them that my mom is the one who taught me. And she makes peanut burger as deliciously as I do without actually mixing it, without actually trying to, you know, go beyond the thing, you know. Everybody said they don't want my mother's peanut. They want my peanut burger. So I traveled. When I came back, it was like it had become a thing of the town. It was like now not only a couple of people in town were doing it, it's like the entire town was doing it. Shame me, I knew that is something that God gave in my hands. I started my own. All my clients and even some extra added again to me. They wanted only my peanut burger. They didn't want from anybody. And someone said that you have the best peanut burger that's ever been. You know why? Because God taught me. And when God taught me, he added and told me that princess, every average normal human being loves quality. In all you're doing, do quality peanut burger. It's better that you make it as small as possible, but do not tamper with the quality. It's better you reduce it to be as small as small can be, but never tamper with the quality. God is a God of excellence. And every single time, even when I traveled, I went and stayed for, I mean, it, I think it was like two years or so, I came back and said the peanut burger, I was still standing out every single time. Know what God has given to you. Know what God has called you to do and keep at it. Just be doing it. Just be doing it. And believe you me, that you're doing what God called you to do doesn't mean it's just going to be so straightforward and so easy. You would have challenges. As long as you're still on this planet Earth, you have challenges. So be ready even for those. Prepare yourself even for those. It says, they run and prepare themselves without my fault. Awake to help me, O Lord, and behold. Thou therefore, O Lord, God of hosts, the God of Israel, awake to visit all the hidden. Be not merciful to any wicked transgressors. David is praying and calling out what he desires to be done to his enemies. He's telling God that, Lord, this is what I want. Do not be merciful to them. Deal with them. There was a time that he was praying and saying that, Lord, tamper justice with mercy. And this time he's saying that, Lord, no mercy. Show them pepe. Like, just deal with them outrightly. Total dealing. So, yes, and that's the truth. There are some people that you look at them and you'll be like, Lord, tamper justice with mercy. There are some people that you look at them and eh? they have vehemently made up their mind. They have perpetually made up their mind that they, eh? no, you, you, you will not progress. Those ones, God, wipe them out. Wipe them out. Anybody that has vowed that they will stand in the way of my progress, they will stand in the way of me getting to the place where God has desired that I should be. Lord, wipe them out. Deal with them. Be not merciful to any of them. Just show them what they deserve. They've made up their minds, right? Says, they return at evening. They make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Behold, They belch out with their mouth. Swords are in their lips. For who say they dot here? I told you guys this one, right? That my mouth used to really be that kind of mouth that had a sword on my lips. I could still talk to you and you'll be like, why are you so mean? Why are you so, I mean, God had worked on me. God has really, really worked on me. 
He has tamed my tongue. He has tamed my attitude. He has built in me some characteristics that I never had. He had actually taken off some characteristics in me that he knew that for the level where he's taking me, I really didn't need it. I used to be so impatient. I mean, like when they say impatient, I used to be hyper impatient. Ah, God has worked on me like some degree of patience. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm not where I was before. I used to be totally and completely impatient. But God has been teaching me patience through introducing delays. And of course, he's expecting that waiting is not only waiting, but the state of mind while you're waiting also matters. It's also important. It says, um, where are we? Okay. But thou, O Lord, shall laugh at them. Thou shalt have the hidden in derision. Of course. God would deal with them, so deal with them so much so that he would laugh. And it says, and God sits in his temple and laughs. Some of the things that he would have to do to these wicked people, or some of the things that the wicked people are doing and bragging about and putting their boast about, God is just laughing, saying, when I go turn open my wrath on you guys, you would, this thing you're doing, this priding that you're priding, this whole kuba kuba dog foul thing you're doing here <laughs> when i'll handle you you will know me <laughs> so he would just laugh at them says he would bring them in derision they'll just be in total confusion like they'll just be stupid they'll just be all right foolish all that they'll do will just be foolishness says because of his strength will i wait upon thee for god is my defense you don't have a choice like the one that you're going to rely on, the one that you're going to depend on is the one who is your defense. God is your defense. Oh, yes. God is your defense. So you have to wait upon him. You have to trust in him. Your strength comes from him. Your power comes from him. Your understanding, your direction comes from him. Just name it. Whatever it is, it is in the package of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. It's all in that package. You need to. He will release strength upon you when you feel like you're weak. It says that now let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Your strength is in Christ. And that word that you're speaking, you're building or you're destroying. It says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Your tongue can build or it can destroy. However you use it, it's a choice. It's up to you. It says... The God of mercy, he's my defense, he's my defender, he's my peace, he's my guide, he's my strength. The God of mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my enemies, my desire upon my enemies. Of course, your enemies will see whatever you've been asking God for. God will so give them their reward. He'll give them diligently what they deserve and you're going to see it. You're going to take your two eyes. You'll not be like the people of old. That only hoped and hoped and hoped and never saw it until we're the ones seeing it and we're not only seeing it, we're leaving it. So your own will not be like the people of Odo. You will see it. You will see it come to pass in your days, which also is, a, is in a kind of way that's God telling you that I'll give you long life. Oh yeah, I'll give you long life because you live long enough so that your enemies will see, you will see all that you are desiring upon your enemies come to pass. Slay them not, lest my people forget. Scatter them by their power and bring them back, O Lord, and bring them down, O Lord, our shield. Oh yeah. Sometimes you don't want them there though. The Bible says, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Shall you kill them? Who he prepared the table before? Oh. Sometimes I pray oh, that my enemy will live long, as long as I live and see what I'll become. They say I won't become this one. Eh? They will live long to see me become it and even better and even more. So slay them not though. Do not slay them. Just scatter them, set confusion in their midst and bring them down. Bring them down. That they will sit and watch and say, Chai, this girl, she's serving a living God. Mm hmm You would. And says, um, 
For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their pride, and for cursing and lying which they speak. Pride goes before a fall. We know that, right? So in your pride, as you're doing all those your things, doing all those your things, you'll just be taken away before you know you're done and dusted. Consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God ruled in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. There are some you'll be consumed. There are some that is just confusion that will be set in your midst. And you sit down and watch us become what you have been praying and desiring that will not become. So there are some people that will be wiped out. There are some people that will be given an opportunity to still live. There are some people that will be given an opportunity to make right. To retrace their steps. There are some people that will just be dealt with outrightly. They are taken out. So begin to tell God. Oh, you get as you don't pain you. You get as you don't do you inside your body. You go tell God. Say God this one. It is the wiping one now. And it's the one you need to wipe out. Share the thing that they don't do for me. Don't too much. It's enough. They've done their worst. It is enough. Enough is enough. Consume them already. So some it will be consuming. Some it would actually be just confusion. Some it will actually be just destroying their plants. Some it will be actually be setting an ambush between them. They will fight against themselves. So that various things that God will do. There are various things that God can do. And at evening, let them return and let them make a noise like a dog and go round about the city. Let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. Let them wander up and down for meat and grudge if they be not satisfied. Lord, cause them to wander. Cause them to go to and fro, left, right, front, back and center. Cause them to see me. They'll see what I'll become. They'll see what you do in me, with me, for me, around me, and in me. And some of them will retrace their steps. They'll get back on track. It says, But I will sing of thy power. Yea, I'll sing aloud of thy mercy in the morning. For thou hast been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. God is the only person that can be your defense. And your refuge in day of trouble. The arm of flesh will fill you. Whatever you depend on. Is it your career? Is it your business? Is it your marriage? Is it your family? Is it your children? Is it your ministry? I don't know what you depend on. All those things will fill you. The only person that will not fill you is Jesus Christ. In the day of your trouble, only Jesus can defend you. Only him can be the true and real refuge. The earlier you believe it, the better for you and your family members. The earlier you believe it, the better for you and your household. Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing. For God is my defense, the God of my mercy. David always knew how. No matter how much he would tell God, what he desires to see his enemies go through and all. Somehow, somewhere, someplace, he will put a praise on it. He will put a praise on it. He will sing to God. He will worship God. He will just praise God for who God is. Do you also get to put a praise on it? Do you also get to put a praise on it? Like David. That's one major key for breakthrough. That's one major key that you can use to get the things that God has promised and purposed and ordained for you. That's one major key. Child of God, learn to put the praise on it. Learn to praise God. Some days you might just, that's just all you will need. Some seasons, that's just all you will need. You will not need some like merchandising prayer and all. You will just need to praise God. You will not need fasting. You will just need to praise God. You will not need so many, many things. All you will need is to remember that there was once upon a time, these people were in trouble, called Paul and Silas, and they decided, regardless of what they were going through, with all the right they had to be grumbling or to be angry, they decided to choose to praise God. 
It is a choice you would have to make. It is not automatic. Sometimes you will not feel like it. Sometimes it will not just be like it. It will not show like you should. But you would have to make the choice anyways. Whether you're going to sit grumbling, murmuring, getting irritated, getting bitter, or you're going to just praise God. When you put a praise on it, the Holy Ghost comes to receive his praise by himself. And when he comes, his presence makes all the difference. He can never come to inhabit the praises of his people and the people who encountered him remain the same. It is impossible. So child of God, I don't know exactly what you're holding on. I don't know exactly what you're waiting for. But if you're trusting God for something, if you're believing God for something, it's about time. If you've prayed, if you fasted, if you've done all you've done and you seem like the answer is not forthcoming, put a praise on it. So guys, let's pray and let God help us to, to actually um, build or grow an attitude of praise, a praise attitude. We've done, we've prayed about attitude of gratitude. We've prayed about attitude of thanksgiving. And of course, today we want to put a praise attitude. Let's pray that to all God's children all over the world, we're going to be able to learn how to praise God at every single point in time. When we are rejoicing, when we have great moments, when we have sad moments, when we are crying, we will still learn to praise God. Father, we come before your train of grace, O oh God. In and out of season, we're going to praise you. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you help us to build an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of praise, an attitude of worship, O oh God. Father, that regardless of what we're going through, regardless of what is happening around us, O oh God, Father, we'll be able to praise you. We'll be able to praise you. We'll be able to worship you. We'll be able to magnify you, O oh God. Regardless of whatever is happening, O oh God, we'll be able to give you all the glory. We'll be able to give you all the honor we'll be able to give you all the adoration oh father we are forever grateful we can't thank you enough oh god for your goodness in our lives for your faithfulness for your loving kindness for your tender mercies oh lord father we are forever grateful lord we say thank you father i pray that you're going to grow in us oh god you're going to give us a burning desire oh god to want to praise you at all times in good or in bad times we'll praise you whether we feel like it or not we're going to praise you Lord, at every point in time, we're going to praise you. Why? Because we know you inhabit the praises of your people. So if we want your presence to come down, oh God, praising you is the way to go. Lord, you're going to help us to understand and know this truth, oh God, and live by them so that they're going to work for us in a very mighty way. Thank you, Lord God, because we know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen 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 and amen i always get to say i love you so very much but god loves you way way more get to like share and subscribe don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all our updates each time we we'll upload a new video or we get to go live it has been your very own princess keaton queen of hearts and laughter <laughs> on a chapter a day and here we get to study the word of God together. We get to create an audio Bible. The word of God says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we desire that you have an opportunity to be able to hear the word of God and hear it so easily and so simply just by clicking the button on your phone. You can actually sleep through the Bible so that your subconscious is going to be soaked in the word. Your spirit man is going to be and it's going to be totally and completely drenched in the word so that every time that you need the word to work for you, the spirit of God is going to bring it to your remembrance. Even those ones that just dropped and remained in your subconscious because you were listening even while sleeping, it's going to work for you. I am here always. If you need me, if you want to ask a question, if you have a prayer request, if you want your birthday to be in the birthday book, please, we're just a WhatsApp away. We're just a Telegram away. We're just a Facebook Messenger away. 
you can actually still put it in the comment section you can send it to us on messenger you can actually send it to us on instagram or whatsapp or on whatever social media platform is more convenient for you and like i said we're looking forward to putting the audio bible as well on other social media platforms especially instagram right now we're looking forward to doing that and i hope that you all are going to join us on all the social media platforms and bless your souls with the word of god thank you all so much for always being there for always stopping by for always supporting sharing liking and doing all that needs to be done to make the word of god go far and wide you're getting your blessings just as you're being a blessing to the world father we thank you for your word today we thank you oh god for speaking to us in a very special way Help us to learn to praise you at all times. Let your praise continuously be on our lips, O God. Father, we bless your holy name, O God. We magnify you. We give you all the praise because you deserve it. Let your name alone and your name alone be glorified, O God. Father, we worship you. Be thou exalted, O God, above all the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. Lord, we say thank you. We appreciate you, O God. Help us to not only be hearers of the word, but doers as well, because the blessing comes in the doing. We thank you, Lord, for being a faithful father. We thank you, Lord, for being a loving friend. We thank you, Lord, for being our brother. We thank you, Lord, for being the king of kings. We thank you, Lord, for being the Lord of lords. We appreciate you totally and completely. Take preeminence, but now forevermore. We know that you're in control. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Tomorrow is another day. By the grace of God, we'll be here again. And it's going to be Psalm 60. Yay! Yay! We're going so fast. We're going surely, slowly, surely, but steady. Thank you all for always coming. Until tomorrow. You can see the glow, right? I had a face massage today. I'm feeling so, I mean, like, just so light. So it's cool. It's really cool. Pamper yourself, guys. Get to pamper yourself. It is okay to pamper yourself. It's not a bad thing. It's okay. It's not a scene. <laughs> Ciao.